I just wanted to make a couple of comments. I guess uh, all of you are familiar with the IIMs. Uh, in case you're not, just a quick minute. I think there are 13 of them, and if the last uh, announcement of the budget is right, there will soon be a few more. Uh, along with the IITs, they've been responsible for getting uh, advanced Indian education uh, on the world map. Uh, it's quite instructive that uh, I was reading somewhere one in three of startups in the U.S. are founded by IIT, IIM, alumni, mostly IIT, but a lot of IIM. Uh, certainly, a lot of the IIM graduate are beginning to hit the top levels of many of the world's largest corporations. So, um, Indra Nui or Vajay Banga at Mastercard or Ivan Menezes at Diageo uh, are all IIM uh, alumni. Uh, closer to home, uh, Sunny Burgis who runs Olam, uh, Ramaswamy, who is the president of the stock exchange, are also all IIM alumni. So, you can see is beginning to be an extremely broad and robust uh, uh, ecosystem. What few people realized till recently is how important Singapore has become as a, a part of this ecosystem. With over a thousand alumni, this happens to be a fantastic concentration. Um, I'm told it's the biggest concentration outside India. I suspect that ex Delhi and Mumbai it might even be the biggest concentration including India because a thousand people in a city is actually a very large number. Now, I think that's what sponsored the creation of this pan IIM alumni agenda some years ago um, and so it was being run every year bringing the alumni together. I think the uh, blinding insight and I think President Nathan was a big part of that uh, last year was if we are such a big part and such a big concentration maybe if the opportunity of making this pan IIM agenda from a Singapore agenda to a global agenda. And over the last couple of years, that's what the pan IIM alumni association has been seeking to do. See how we can actually drive and make Singapore the global hub for the pan IIM uh, uh, alumni. Um, last year's program was outstanding. Uh, for those of you who attended it, you experienced it. Those of you who did not, uh, you saw excerpts of it on the video. Uh, I spent a lot of time with it. Uh, the content was outstanding, uh, the creativity was great, uh, getting the right people together was uh, enormously helpful. A large part of the Singapore establishment uh, you know, from the Deputy Prime Minister, ex-president has been engaged with it because they see the value in trying to leverage this as a, as a resource base. Um, this year, the second year that we are trying to pull this together, the intent and hope is to try and take it uh, one step beyond, um, faster, better, uh, bigger if you will. Uh, we think that three potential significant upsides from what we are trying to do. One quite clearly, like a lot of other uh, uh, um, events, it helps to put Singapore on the global map. Uh, that's an important part of the agenda for us in Singapore. Uh, Singapore is obviously a global city, but to be able to plug into an equally global resource pool, the IM alumni, it's a match made in uh, uh, heaven. Uh, I just uh, mentioned a large number of the IIM alumni are in global leadership positions. And so, to engage them in some way, shape or form with Singapore is a useful thing to do. Uh, the second big upside really uh, stems from helping to sponsor and further the Singapore-India connectivity. We think that's a very powerful opportunity and particularly uh, as the markets and the uh, business systems grow more optimistic about Indian, India's prospects uh, after the last election, uh, we think the opportunities are actually very significant. As you know, there's uh, substantial Singapore interest in India already. I mean, Singtel has a big presence there. Uh, PSA is uh, getting into the port. Um, you know, Singapore Airlines has gone in uh, to the country again. Uh, with this new, you know, 100 smart cities that uh, the Prime Minister Modi is trying to do, there's a big opportunity for Singapore infrastructure, uh, technology to play a more meaningful role. For us in DBS, for example, Singapore is a big part of our own business. So, there's a lot of uh, business uh, moving out from here into India. Equally, there's a lot of Indian business uh, increasingly beginning to use Singapore, not just as an Asia center, but as a global center. I'm struck by how many, take the Tata Group, for example. They're basing the entire international operations out of uh, headquarters out of Singapore. And you're beginning to see more of that, a recognition that Singapore is an extremely relevant and important international hub for Indian business. Uh, whether it's flow of financial services and finance, uh, you're seeing a lot more fundraising happening out of Singapore for Indian companies, or just the flow of logistics and trade. We think this corridor, the Singapore-India corridor has a lot of potential. 
as part of what we are doing with the uh, I impact this year and frankly not just that Sanjeev will speak to you about a range of other programs that they have. Uh, the agenda is to reach out and establish more lines of connectivity between uh, Singapore and India which we think will be helpful. Uh, the third big uh, opportunity is really around the change agenda. Uh, you heard President Nathan speak of that as well. It's quite clear that life is being reinvented. How people live, how people operate, how people work is being reinvented. The consumer digital lifestyle is upon us and it's going to have profound impact on things as varied from sports to education to businesses to uh, social enterprise to families. We believe that in this community, uh, India with a lot of cutting edge change, a lot of startups, a lot of technology, Singapore with a natural predisposition to driving a change agenda with a lot of money invested not only in R&D but thinking about how com com countries can evolve and how countries can be different and the IIM community which in, in itself has the seeds of a lot of ideation, creativity and entrepreneurship. We think this is a fantastic community to drive this reinvention and change agenda. You will find that uh, in the course of the one and a half days, a large part of the agenda and content is therefore woven around reinvention themes. Uh, the change agenda and the change theme, like I said, Sanjeev will walk you through that. But uh, that is not all. Uh, there is uh, a separate program which we are also going to do, which is the I am Pack Crosstalk series to bring a lot of people, an ongoing speaker series from India and outside into Singapore to see how we can continue leveraging on this. Um, there is the potential of working closely to mentor SMEs in Singapore to help Singapore SMEs try and drive a new way of doing things and a new future. There is a separate program around that. So, we believe that it is not a one off. We believe that there is a chain of different events uh, that we can support as a community to help drive uh, the change agenda. Uh, when you put all of that together, I think the opportunities are immense. The platform is great. This one and a half days, the I am packed August 22nd, 23rd is a great place to feel the energy, to sense the possibilities and to be a part of what we think will be something profoundly different and very exciting. Uh, so, thank you again for coming here. We hope you will uh, uh, you know write about this in your publications, media, whatever. As much attention and as much uh, publicity we can get around it, uh, uh, the, ha the happier we will be, we'll be more than welcome. Uh, thank you all and we look forward to seeing you all uh, in August.